Greetings and welcome to Listen to the Neighbors Construction. I'm your host, John Darneal, and today you'll be joining me in Listening to the Neighbors Construction. They do a lot of construction. Um, uh, <laughs> this is not actually that show. There is no such show. This show is What's in Your Bag for Amoeba. Um, and what I did was I grabbed a bunch of stuff that sits in the upper register of the digital panel in my office room and then stuff that's by the TV, which the TV is connected to a DVD player, a Blu-ray Blu player through which I play CDs. Also, because the system is integrated, uh, you know what I mean? It's like, it's all together, you know? So, uh, so anyway, let's get started. Um, this is Eric Friedlander. You may know him if you like the Mountain Goats um, from three albums in a row, Sunset Tree, Get Lonely, and Heretic Pride. Uh, but beyond that, he's a, a, a musician whose credentials go before him. He's played with Zorn forever, and he's made a bunch of amazing records. I actually got to know him because of his record on Brassland, Maldoror, and that was how I, I wound up playing a show with him at the Knitting Factory. And after I saw it, I said, hey, you want to be on a Mountain Goats record sometime? And he said, sure, let's hook it up. And that record was The Sunset Tree. Uh, that's him on Up the Wolves. Uh, so yeah, this one was recorded in Brooklyn and mixed right here in Durham by Scott Solter, one of the finest engineers alive, who also uh, worked on those three records um, I just mentioned, um, and did the Satanic Messiah AP on the stuff with the Mountain Goats. Scott, a long-standing partner of mine. Uh, this here, in an earlier edit of this video, I, uh, I, I, I retied uh, this thing on Silent Rain Productions, and now I must untie it. Uh, so. This is BV Dub, uh, look who, very fancy uh, black uh, insert with the, I don't know if they can catch the, the gold flakes there. There's gold flakes. And that's literally all that is. It's just a piece of black paper with gold flakes. Um, and then the liner notes, BV Dub, Burn Back Time. This is another thing where I got it off Bandcamp, but I wanted the physical because well, it, it, it ties together. You know, it's got a whole thing in there. Um, it's four tracks of uh, dubby stuff by Brock Van Way on the Silent Rain label. Um, good stuff. Next we have Philadelphia's Moore Mother and Nicole Mitchell uh, live at uh, Le Guess Who, uh, which is, I believe, in Belgium and is a place I've got several live recordings at, and I should love to play there myself someday when we're allowed uh, to play in clubs again. Um, yeah. uh, Moore Mother is some challenging... Um, uh, electronic, but also informed by uh, jazz and folk traditions. Um, really fantastic music. I, I got a bunch of stuff by, by more other analog fluids of sonic black holes is another. Um, yeah, more mothers doing a lot of really interesting. Um, uh, I mean, what do you call it? Uh, uh, modern classical. Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of jazz, maybe. Uh, more mother is in her own neighborhood and it's worth looking into. Um, Shostakovich, of course, is classical music. Um, and uh, this is Symphony Number no. 13 in B minor, the Bobby Yar. Um, I actually once uh, saw Yevdyshenko read the poem uh, that uh, that this, uh, that is the oratory for the, the oratory, we want, libretto for this. Uh, just, a, just a famous Shostakovich symphony. I'm kind of bigger on the quartets, but I was trying to give him some more shots with the symphony, but my taste in symphonies run a little, uh, Little, little more, little, little further west, Mahler, Bruckner, um, and then earlier also, I'm the big, big Haydn guy. Once again, enjoy the construction sounds. I, I tried, I, I, I wait and I wait to shoot these things, but it just doesn't matter. Night and day, night and day. Another uh, guy, uh, King Diamond, another guy. <laughs> this is a fatal portrait. I have it on vinyl, but uh, this is uh, the recent Metal Blade reissue. I'm a sucker for the, looks like the vinyl CD. Black CD. I remember when those were the things, if you're burning your own CDs, you could buy different colors ones. So yeah, this is a reissue of Fatal, Fatal Portrait, which is um, uh, just a fantastic album. The first one he made after leaving Merciful Fate and forming a new band uh, with Michael Denner uh, in it and Andy LaRock. Mickey D on drums. I mean, Fatal Portrait is just an absolutely classic, classic record. Those first two King Diamond solo records, unbelievably good. Uh, speaking of which, Conspiracy uh, has a truly outstanding back cover of the members of the band standing over a coffin um, and it's got at the graves on it it's got uh, uh, oh Eamon belongs to them on it or he's continuing the them storyline um, yeah King Diamond's one of my favorite artists um, of all time I have a, a merciful fate tattoo if you don't know King Diamond uh, he is sort of one thing that's great about him is he's a take it or leave it proposition either you are down with the program or you do not like it um, he's got an extraordinarily piercing falsetto that he sings in over half the time. 
Uh, I, I recoiled from it the first time I heard it in the 80s. I, I did not, and then I got so curious about my response that I came back and that I've been addicted for years. So um, this here is David Cordero. Hone, I believe it's pronounced. I'm not sure of that, but uh, this is electronic music, uh, uh, soothing and good electronic music. Jazz Impressions of Japan, the Dave Brubeck Quartet. Always a little suspicious of uh, impressions of uh, sort of constructions like that. You know, I wonder, like, you know, uh, but 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 I love Brubeck. I mean, who who does not enjoy the music of Dave Brubeck? It's just really when there's a particular itch you need scratched uh, for something that has has motion, but is at the same time deeply mellow, deeply you know engages your your pleasure centers in a very uh, I don't want to say calming but uh, uh, satisfying centering way. Brubeck uh, can very much be the, the dude to go to and, and is for me a lot of the time. Here we have Frozen Crown, Crown in Frost. This is the follow-up uh, to um, uh, The Fallen King, their uh, completely amazing debut. But yeah, Frozen Crown, that previous record, every song on it is good. This is also quite good. That would be an almost impossible record to follow up and Frozen Crown is just one of the most exciting new power metal bands in years. If you like power metal and who doesn't, I recommend Frozen Crown. And then uh, a couple of Steve Roach records. Uh, here's the new one, Tomorrow. Oh, it's really good. It's really, do you like Steve Roach? I love Steve Roach. Steve Roach makes electronic music out in the desert. With He's got a big room full of machines called the Time Room where he records his stuff. Big, long drones. If you look at the times of these tracks, right, he is patient. Very patient man, Steve Roach. Very patient man. And uh, and makes these, uh, these long, exploratory synth and synth patch, uh, but there's not drone, exactly. Uh, there's a little too much movement going on texturally. Um, I, I have like a million records by Steve Roach. Once you get into Steve Roach, sort of there's no end, uh, uh, as, as, as evidenced by here. I have Immersion 3. There is an Immersion 1 and 2. Do I have them? Yes. I forget if there's an Immersion 4, but I would bet there is. Uh, these ones, the songs occupy entire CDs, right? And you can't believe that those songs feature synthesizers and that the synthesizers go for long periods of time. And some of us really need that kind of thing like oxygen, right? Uh, I love Steve Roach. I love Steve Roach. I can't get enough Steve Roach. But uh, anyway, that is what was sitting around on my piano. That is what was in front of the stereo. That is the stuff. Um, thank you for joining me here on, on Construction Update. I'll keep you posted as to the bandsaws and the hammers and the tack hammers and all that. Thank you. Goodbye.